we're going to add to what we just were talking about. Um, so here's here's the picture I'm going to paint for you. Then we're going to do so we're going to actually do a psychological experiment today too. Not not like a not like a psychiatric experiment where like give you drugs and measure things, mm -hmm. but a psychological experiment that actually causes quite a rift in the uh, in the psychological world, which is actually kind of cool. Um, but anyway, before we do that, I'll tell you a story. I used to play uh, drums in a thrash band, and we practice on Wednesday nights. And it was it made Butterfly look simple playing drums with these guys for four hours every Wednesday. Uh, so um, I would fuel up before I knew better by going down to uh, Del Taco and getting four half-pound beef and cheese burritos <laughs> and a big old thing of Mountain Dew. So I I down that right before we played, and then we uh, four hours later, and I sweat out three pounds of water and whatever else, and as you'll see later, salt. Um, but I started thinking because I'm me, uh, as I was buying these things and lugging what I thought was two pounds of beans, cheese, and stuff down to the practice space on my back, on my bike, I, I said, ah, they call them half pound bean and cheese burritos. That's interesting. Why do they call them that? Why do they call them that? Because I got a half pound of beans and cheese on it. How do they make sure of that? Because this is the kind, do they, but do they? See, I watched them, I watched them once. I'm watching back there, I'm like, there's no scale back there. <laughs> <laughs> like Assume that they're actually. scooping. Okay, so maybe there's a calibrated, a exactly, pound. like you guys are drinking, you're drinking your Starbucks, you're drinking your Red Bulls, you're drinking your sodas. These things are calibrated too, when they're filled. Not, not, obviously not the ones you guys fill yourselves. But that's a quart, or 20 ounces, or whatever it is. Right? And you've got 16 ounce cups, and you've got the, uh, the uh, what are they, the hydro flasks, and they're 16 ounces, or 14 ounces, whatever they are. All these things are built by machines or filled by machines that are calibrated. Except for the Starbucks, which are poured by a person. Yeah, we're calibrated. You're, you're, we're, we're calibrated. We're humans, yeah. or at least we're trained. I remember bartending years ago and practicing with a little shot glass and a black line drawn around it for an ounce and a quarter. And we had to sit there for half an hour and de develop what we call our five count. You pour one, two, three, four, five, and probably because some bartenders not in here, yes, because you don't want to. Oh no, just remember that. <laughs> so, and one second was a quarter ounce, and we got it to the point where we could pour multiple bottles while talking to customers and pouring an ounce and a quarter and getting drinks to taste right and not over pouring or under pouring. So calibration is important for things like this. Not as important for a double taco half pound of cheese burritos, but that thing's not for measuring. <laughs> so what I did. What I did, I apologize, this, is, this, this will be a PowerPoint eventually. Okay, let's put this over here. There. So here, and I apologize, it's also this overhead is going to be... This is going to be right. Oh, I, I, I've kind of sworn off of them. Um, this was back in 06, so 05, 06. Plus I discovered Perea. Oh, my lord. And uh, Rigoberto's. And uh, who else makes Valeria awesome burritos? Taco salsa. Yeah, taco stand when they're open, taco which is a pr approximately never. two and a half hours a week. When they're open. And I have cash, which is also never. Um, but anyway, super burrito. There's plenty of good burrito. Yeah. But this was just on the way to practice, you know, and I just got in the habit of doing it. So, but this is the thing. So I started thinking how much do these things actually weigh? Like, what, like, it, so is it such that? Each of those things is calibrated so that they weigh at least half a pound. You can answer that question right now. I borrowed a scale from Bruce Emerson in science when they were still in Ochigo. The highly precise, you can see, it gets down to thousands of a pound. That's crazy. That's crazy precision. And then I randomly, now I'm going to put randomly in quotes, you two. I randomly surveyed 30 of them. I randomly surveyed 30 of them. I say randomly because I, only, I went to the same Del Taco every week. I think there's only one in town anyway, but I went to that one. I had different people each week, so that was pseudo-random. But I was going at about the same time every week, which is hardly random. So, hopefully you can excuse my lack of pure randomness. I did generate a random number for a while, the ones I was weighing. Like, I would, I would randomly generate a number from one to four, and then only weigh one of the four of them. And so I, sometimes I weigh all four, sometimes I weigh two. So after, over the course of a couple of months, I collected this, what I think is pretty decent data. So let's answer Chris's first claim. Half pound bean and cheese burrito will definitely weigh at least half a pound. What do you think? Not all the time. What do you think? Okay, so, so uh, what I'm getting at is I got some that weren't half a pound. 
Now, did I sue them like, like a typical American would do? No. <laughs> I got 11.9 ounces in my Pepsi. Sit down, sir. Dude, you you don't need the other point one. Who's that again? You could probably get rich. <laughs> or I could just share the data with you guys. <laughs> I hope we can share the data with you guys. Get a bunch of data. So here's, here's the deal. We, we've kind of refuted the claim that they all weigh half a pound. But somebody, I think it was Rosie, did you ever, or Dina, one of you two said, that's not what I was after. What am I after? Not how much each one weighs, but how much they weigh. Boom! That's what inference is about. It's not about an individual data point. It's about a set of data points, and in particular about the entire population. So what I want to do right now, leave this data up there. I'm going to swing this guy over to the side, and I'm going to restart. Oops. Well, that kind of works. Cool. Maybe I'll do that from now on. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to title this next section. Turn this off for a sec. We have now estimated, we have already estimated little p with little p hat. And the way we've done that, of course, is by doing p hat plus or minus a margin of error. That's what we've already discussed. What am I talking about with Del Taco? and their weights. Am I talking about P hat? Could, could I talk about P hat? Yes, definitely. If I use this as a sample, if I use this as my sample, what percentage of the sample came in at at least, five, at least half a pound? If I use this as my sample, what percentage of my sample came in at at least half a pound? What percentage of my sample? I'm going to count the ones that did. Four, five, six, seven didn't, which means the other 23 did. So 23 out of 30 came in over half a pound. And we could construct an interval around that, couldn't we? We could. We would enter 23 in for x. What the hell? Let's do it. Let's do it. This is good practice. All right. Batteries are low. I'll fix that later. Recommend change. Recommend change. It's because I'm always powering a screen with it, which is not designed to do, really. All right, 23 out of 30. Before you hit calculate, try to predict what the margin of error is going to be on this bad boy. Before you hit 30, just get a ballpark in your head of how wide it's going to be. 5%, 6%, 7%. I mean, you, 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 you know what P hat's going to be, ish, ish. But try to think about what that plus or minus percentage is going to be. And then once you've got a pretty good idea, go ahead and press enter. Did anybody pick 15%? Around 15%? That's essentially what it is. See how it's 30% wide? R roughly 30% wide? That means the margin of error is half of that, because you have to stack a margin of error above and below p hat. So we got about a 75%, 77% success rate on the burritos, which is actually pretty bad if you think about it. I mean, that means three out of every four of the burritos are going to come in over half a pound and one's coming in below. If you're looking at strict percentages, that seems bad to me. Uh, but, but the plus or minus, the plus or minus, here's the deal though, the plus or minus the 15, I don't even want to use this method because look how wide that is. That's almost down to 50-50 and it's almost up to 100%. I mean, we're almost back in this, right, Kaylee's like, we're almost back in the same Problem with 100% confidence. It's so wide now, it's almost unusable. And, not to mention the fact I haven't answered the question. What was the question I asked you? Do you remember? You might not. Yeah, but you're just trying to figure out ways to make me multimillionaire by turning them in. <laughs> what, was the, what was the question I asked? What's the average weight? I asked for the average weight, not for what percent came in above some, some fixed value like 0.5. I asked the average weight of a Del Taco. Half pound of cheese burrito. Can we test that using a single proportion confidence interval? Can we test that? Will emphatically shakes his head. No. Who else says no? We cannot test that. Or and or why can't we test that using a single proportion confidence interval? Let me ask a parallel question. What kind of data do you have for proportions? This is all the way back to day one of 243. I'm such a bastard sometimes. <laughs> what kind of data is it? You, you count it. 
What kind of data is that? Discrete. What do you do with weights? What do you do with weights? You measure them. That's why I had to borrow that scale. I wasn't just counting burritos. I had to have a weight measurement too. So since I have a weight measurement, I have to use continuous data. And you can't do this guy right here with continuous data. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So now we need to add to this another tool in the tool shed, a toolbox, where we estimate a population mean. Remember what he's called? And you can totally say no if you don't. It's mu. It's that guy we very rarely talk about in 243 because we never know who he is. And we still don't know who he is. I still don't know how much on average a Del Taco half pound meat and cheese burrito weighs. Because right as I'm talking, they're making them right now and changing mu. But what I do know is it's out there and we label it as mu. And we're going to estimate that bad boy with the sample mean who we can get and who's that? Remember what he's called? That's a sample standard deviation, or that's a population standard deviation. X bar. X bar. That's our friend we're going to be using quite a bit in here. X bar. Which means we have to be able to take X bar and form a margin of error around that X bar. So we're going to have our sample average. And then from that, we're going to build wings, just like we did with proportion. But the problem is, is that we cannot build or use the same wings that we did back in the day. We can't build the same wings that we did back in the day. We have to set, we have to bring up a new set of wings. And Will, you asked about the central limit theorem last time. This is where it really kicks in directly, because now we're talking about the same kind of data. You're, you're, you're going to recognize it's not going to be hidden under a radical. It's going to be perfectly obvious when you see it. But you guys are kind of getting to that point where you don't want to see it right now. You get that glaze. So let's take our five, yes? And we'll come back and regroup and see how to deal with Del Taco and their 30 bean cheese burritos. If anybody needs a program or anything,